Hi! Today, I'm here to preach about the glory of video games. My aim is to share with you a simplified picture of what video games are at their core, at least from my perspective. I'm 27 years old, and within the past 10 years, I've taken part in creating over 70 games, in collaboration with a variety of teams, of course. I'm currently a co-founder in a startup that creates video games for advertising purposes. My role and passion revolves around the business development front of the company. It took me some trial and error <laughs> uh, to understand what I really gravitated towards. However, I was absolutely certain that it was something within gaming that was my calling. To the younger version of me, getting into the gaming industry was a dream that had to materialize. I chose this line of work because video games were like magic to me. So many of my good memories stem from the times that I've been playing a game with alone or with a friend. Not only because video games have the ability to provide an immersive experience, but also because they have the power to provide comfort in a very hard to live with reality. While multiplayer games provide a platform for people to socialize on. From my point of view, video games are experiences within digital worlds. Each game gives you the tools necessary to make your own choices, and every game has the potential to be a good experience for some people, maybe not so good for others. Just like music, video games have an array of genres to explore. So it's safe to say that at this day and age, there is something for everyone. I've gathered a few clips from games to highlight the progress of the gaming industry over the years, and a few distinct sets of experiences that they deliver to people. I have to give you a trigger warning. <laughs> Your favorite game will not be on the list. Sorry. But you can tell your friends all about the games I should have included. Uh, <laughs> so it's a win-win. I get to leave the stage alive, and uh, you get to speak about your favorite video games. Yay. And uh, so, with that out of the way, let's start with the vid first video game ever made. This was the first video game ever made. <laughs> Might seem very simple, wasn't that easy at the time. In October 1958, the American physicist William Higginbotham created the, what, is, uh, what is thought to be the first video game ever. As you can see, it looked more like a mechanical installation than a digital world. Just as long as you remember that the first game ever was not Pac-Man or Super Mario, I I I'm happy. The first ever commercially available game was Computer Space. This arcade game was made in 1971. It took a decade for video games to become available for people on a commercial level and even more so for video game related job titles to become mainstream. When video games reached the milestone of commercial availability, they began to provide new kinds of experiences within our finite everyday reality. I'm guessing you've seen this game. This is Donkey Kong, a game released in 1981. Super Mario had his debut as a character in this arcade game. Donkey Kong was a revolutionarily fun experience for so many people of many ages at the time that it was released. For a few coins, you could try and beat this super challenging game while probably waiting behind you, there was a line of people waiting for their turn to play. When personal computers became a platform for games, people were suddenly able to, to dive into much more complicated and visually enhanced experiences. This is Unreal Tournament. It was among the favorite games of the late 2000s. People had parties where they brought in entire, their entire computers in order to set up a local area network and play their favorite game together. Unreal Tournament was created by Epic Games, the same company that made the Unreal game engine as well as Fortnite. The handheld experience was also an impactful step forward for gaming with friends. I would like to share with you two nearly identical versions of the same game, Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Red. These games, and the ones that came after, 
have a very special place in my heart. They were available on a device called the Game Boy, and it was a device that you held at your hands, literally. It was amazing because you could take it away from home and you could meet up with your friends and play with them. You could use Pokemon, those digital creatures, to battle or trade by connecting your device to another via special cable. In order to complete either of the two games, you would have to collect all of those creatures. So part of the fun is that you need to trade with other people in order to fully complete your collection. There is not really enough to properly uh, analyze World of Warcraft, actually. Uh, so I'll give you a short premise. It's an MMORPG, which basically means that you take part in a world as a character alongside thousands of people, and you play along together all at the same time. And there's not just one thing to do, there's dozens of different activities that you can do, and you're free to do whatever you want. You could say this is part of the metaverse. Thing is, the game first launched in 2004, and metaverse still doesn't have a proper definition. So uh, it's not part of the metaverse. People, however, do use it as a parallel reality with very real friends and very real commitments. Continuing on the trends of multiplayer games, the game has pulled before, League of Legends. So, League of Legends was a game that was released back in 2009. It is what people would refer to as an eSport. It is a 5 versus 5 multiplayer online battle arena game. There have been many competitions all over the world with entire football stadiums, and as you can see on the screen, of people actively supporting their favorite team. People play this game because they love it. And why do they love it? Because it pushes you to become more competitive. People are actively pushed to perform in each and every single match. In addition to that, the way the game is balanced, it changes all the time. So you have to adapt based on what the next patch is or how the game is played currently. Even if you don't know any of the games I've mentioned so far, you definitely know this one. This is Pokemon Go. Same franchise from a few slides back. So be careful who you call ugly during middle school. Same franchise from a few slides back. Because when Pokemon Go was released back in 2016, it created a global phenomena. People swarm across the streets in seek of digital creatures. You might say that this behavior was weird or abnormal, alarming even, but most of the people that played the game around the time of its peak would say that it was pretty nice because you, could, you had a good excuse to go out and people were playing it, so you, know, you could talk to them, say hi. And uh, for a brief time in history, you know, truth be told, uh, we all had something in common that we could do together and have fun, fun with, so that was nice. Next up, we have Elden Ring, a game released in February of 2022. A very challenging game with a vast world to explore, many daunting monstrosities to defeat, and breathtaking visuals. The game, to many of us, is a masterpiece. Best advice people could give you, if you're interested in beating this game, of course, uh, is to get good at it. Because if uh, you don't, so this game is going to probably make you suicidal. But uh, in any case, <laughs> Uh, because uh, things uh, have, uh, seem to have meaning only when they're hard. Uh, so I guess uh, they managed to figure out a formula where, you know, if you push the player at the state of flow, he's going to be in a position where he will either be good enough to move forward or she will have to push him to try again. And people that play this game I self-identify as real gamers because they're not afraid of failure. Thing is, uh, that doesn't make you a gamer, really. <laughs> For me, actually, a gamer is anyone who enjoys games as in another medium of entertainment. It is because of that game's extremity in terms of challenge that makes every victory and every level up feel significant. While playing this game, eventually, you'll run into the encounter I mentioned, but regardless of what you do, in order to complete the game, you, you need to really invest a lot of effort in learning the game and understanding the game and making you know, real progress within a digital world that doesn't mean anything. 
yet you still have to put in thousands and thousands of hours to really become competitive at it? Or even finishing it takes about 500 hours. How many people do you know that invest 500 hours in anything these days? To me, a gamer, a gamer is anyone who enjoys video games as another medium of entertainment, as I said shortly before. Games are becoming more easy and accessible than ever, and so the term gamer is broadening as do the people who enjoy games. When you compare video games to other types of digital content, it's easy to draw parallels. Videos, for example, can serve loads of purposes. Videos can be movies, videos can be content for social media like TikTok, or even advertisements for television. Similarly, video games have started to branch in a variety of ways, but they are special for two key reasons. First key reason is that you ha they have the capacity to fully utilize any type of digital media, basically. But also, in addition to that, they can also you fully utilize any type of hardware. You know, VR glasses, AR cameras, and all that. The second key reason is because the way you experience a game is not passive, it's, it's active. You actively seek to reach the next level. You mindfully consider your options and resources. You carefully weigh the odds of winning in stressful situations. You Google the problems that make you struggle and experiment with different approaches. These are all principles that humans are built to feel good for doing when there is a reward for doing so. In a successful manner, of course. You could agree that, in a sense, life is like a video game. From my perspective, video games are made of determination. You only choose to put effort into something. You don't have to put effort into anything. Effort, as a matter of fact, is never a given. When the more determined you are, the more you're going to convert that thought into an effort, purposeful action. And humans have proven to be able to achieve a godlike status among the rest of the entities in the food chain by leveraging that one single power, determination. You can direct your efforts in learning how to communicate, for example, with people like uh, around you. Say you're a caveman and you don't know how to speak. This didn't happen on its own. We made that happen. And this is why people involved in the societies, we were all to a fluctuating degree, determined to level up on an individual level. There is life without determination, like animals, I don't know. But there is no video game if people don't make it. And it takes a lot of purposeful action to become a professional game developer. You will either do something on your own and ensure that it somehow, <laughs> miraculously, it has users, or you join a company that produces video games in some way. The typical approach would be to first become good at whatever it is you want to be doing. And uh, also, you have to be doing that um, as good as the rest of the people that are trying to do it, and uh, also as good as the people who already do it. And uh, you know, you have to be competitive. You have to constantly keep evolving. You can't just, oh, I learned this, and I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. No, the, the world is changing in this field. And, uh, and so, naturally, it, the, this environment breeds a, a special kind of person that exists in other professions as well, and it exists in uh, uh, places outside of work. But in uh, the video game industry, it's uh, you know, the common sense among us. So every game you will inter ever interact with has been made from people who had to become objectively skilled and keep evolving at whatever it is they're doing. They all had one thing in common, though. They love what they do. Inherently, chances are that any game you pick will be a labor of love. And from the creator's standpoint, that game is their child. A qu quote from Carl Jung states, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and you will call it fate. Game developers of any kind are people who followed their unconscious desire through conscious effort and became who they became in order to be able to make a living out of devoting their life in something they love doing. That is why it was their fate. So next time you pick up a game, be mindful of what those people made for you. Pay close attention and try to notice those things a little more.
You wouldn't believe what people have gone through and what people fought for you in order for the game to be as good as it can be by the time you play it. With that being said, I hope you've learned a thing or two about video games and if anything stayed with you from my talk, I hope it, that is your determination can shape your life in a way that it does for us game creators. Use your real life experience to level up, use your focus as your fuel, and use your determination as your compass. That's all I have to say, thank you.